Beyblade and Dragon Ball Part 3 In the previous two videos, I've explored a scenario where some of the Beyblade characters crossed over to the Dragon Ball universe. Last time, not only have both Goku and Jinga encountered each other in the strangest of ways, Vegeta and Ryuga have also run into each other, and from the way things stand, let's just say neither of them seem to be in a friendly mood. If you haven't already, go and see the first two parts to catch up with the story. Now, onto the video! So our story continues with both Vegeta and Ryuga staring each other down, both with menacing faces. As we zoom out, both are in their fighting stances, and after what just happened in the previous video, the tension in the air became so palpable that if you just stood near their vicinity, you would feel an immense pressure over your body. That tension would soon break, as Vegeta suddenly jumps into the air, and as we wonder what he intends to do, he forms an axe punch stunt, ready to hammer Ryuga right down to the ground. That is what would happen if Ryuga was just a regular human being. But the infamous Dragon Emperor blocks the attack in quick motion. Urgh, why you? Who in Hades do you think you are? You're barking up the wrong tree, pal! Like I said, that doesn't even matter. But if you want to know so bad, consider me your doom. You're the one who's doomed! Just you watch! Suddenly, Ryuga lets off a burst of ki, enabling him to push Vegeta away, emitting a fiery red aura in return. This aura is exactly the same kind Ryuga emits when he launches El Drago or gets seated in a bay battle with a strong opponent. It's as if the power of El Drago itself lies dormant within Ryuga, and is just being awakened like a beast. Vegeta, despite being pushed back so abruptly, quickly regains his position mid-air. What the? Vegeta then realizes that something, traveling much faster than the speed of a bullet, is advancing to his direction. Where are you going? I'm not done with you! We then see that this something is none other than Ryuga. It seems like not only has he somehow inherited the raw strength of his Beyblade El Drago, but also its agility and jump boost too. So much so that he looks to be flying. When we pan out, Ryuga is evidently pushing Vegeta, not letting on in the slightest. Until they both crash land against the side of a cliff with vicious ferocity, the rocks flying around as if they were shrapnel. Grrr. That'll teach you to mess with me. Now, leave me alone or else I won't go easy on- Huh? Suddenly, Ryuga notices something strange. As the smoke clears, he notices that Vegeta isn't even there. Surprise, surprise! You're too slow! What? And just abruptly as that revelation, Vegeta, using his quick reaction speed, rushes behind Ryuga attempting to officially knock his lights out. <laughs> However, that isn't what happens, as Vegeta isn't the only one with quick reflexes. <laughs> Very quickly, both engage in a tight hand struggle, and as time passes, both look onto each other with the intent to harm horribly. The sheer intensity of the interaction seemed to ignite a fiery explosion, like flint and steel to TNT, the mountain that they were perched on instantly disintegrating. Eventually, both fighters fall back to the ground, both readying themselves for the next clash. Alright, I'll have to admit, you're really strong, pal. But what does not change is that you're still annoying. I'm gonna teach you a lesson that you'll never forget, buddy. Ah! Huh. I'm annoying, you say? After I'm done crippling you, annoying isn't gonna be the only word you'll use to describe me. Ah! And after a brief talk, both warriors clash once again, with even greater determination to beat the other. While all of that is happening, on the other side of the world, we go back to Goku and Jinga. 
And after the events of the previous video, we can see that Jinga is still recovering from the shock of his situation. Huh? What was that? Just as Goku was about to check up on Jinga, he notices an abnormal occurrence. I can sense Vegeta's energy. He must be fighting someone. Hey, kid? So, have you come alone? Or has anyone else arrived with you? I don't think you're the only one who came into this world. Huh? What do you mean? Upon hearing what Goku just said, Jinga jolts up, as if a lightning bolt just hit him. And with curiosity getting the better of him, Jinga says, Tell me you're kidding. What do you mean? I don't think you're the only one who came into this world. You can't just say that. How would you know? Yes, it's true. You may not believe me right now, but I have this ability to sense key signatures. It's basically the energy that each and every person is born with. With enough practice, even you can learn to sense a person's key. You can even sense whether a person is inherently pure or evil. So when you came to this planet, I was somehow able to pick up two completely new signatures that I've never felt before, and me and my friend decided to check them out. The fact that I could even sense your energy in the first place means that you're strong, really strong, but you're not exactly honed in with your strength yet. Jinga, looking even more confused than he was before, can only just emit a face of pure shock. What? This is the first time I'm hearing any of this? Key signatures? Energy? Well, at least you called me strong. Jinga then thinks to himself, that's not even the most important part. He said there were two, and his friend went out to find the other one. So who is it? Is it really true that someone else came to this strange world through a portal? I'll have to find out. Jinga then abruptly turns to face Goku in an attempt to ask for help. Hey, mister, you can fly, right? This may sound like an odd question, but can you take me there, please? Goku just puts his hand behind his head and responds, Well, I was planning to take you there anyway. Maybe you'll recognize him, but we're not flying over there. I have a faster way to reach our destination. Soon enough, we return to the battlefield, where deadly exchanges have just been made between our two fearsome warriors. And after having understood each other's fighting patterns, both take a moment to pause, assessing each other's next move. Until both of them give each other evil grins, their faces filled with such deviousness that it seems like both now have the intent to kill each other. From further away, we see a couple of rocks fall off the cliff. And just as gravity would ordain, one of the rocks falls to the ground, with a slight crackling sound resulting from the fall. Instantly, like a trigger, the sound sets both fighters into motion. They move so fast towards each other that mirages can be seen where they once were. And from an elevated view, we see two trails of energy rapidly advancing towards each other. And expectantly, we see a collision of fists, the reverberation so strong that shockwaves are sent from miles away. And as we come closer to the fight, we see Ryuga with almost an animalistic look of desire to harm on his face, barrage punching Vegeta, aiming to get the winning shot. Vegeta, however, appears to be holding up with the assault, his face cool and collected, attempting to find his opening to strike. He then finds it, quickly opting to hold his body to the ground, intending on delivering a deadly double kick to his opponent. Yeah! Vegeta was able to successfully land a direct blow to Ryuga's stomach. No way is Ryuga able to withstand it. <laughs> Until when we pan over to Ryuga's face, we see that somehow, he hasn't even flinched in the slightest. Nice try, but if you really think that lousy attack is what'll put me down, then you're wrong! 
Ryuga, not allowing Vegeta even a moment to reconsider his plan of attack, quickly grabs Vegeta's legs. What? He didn't even flinch. And then, in a shocking display of strength, we see that Ryuga is actually able to pick up Vegeta and spin him so fast that you can only see a mirage of his figure as he fights to maintain himself. Ryuga, on the other hand, seems to only be enjoying this. A little too much. Hey pal, ever heard of a Beyblade? Well, you are one now! Kia! And just as suddenly as his spinning attack, Ryuga lets go of Vegeta, throwing him to yet another cliff, with the intention of inflicting as much trauma as possible. As we follow Vegeta's body, we see that it finally makes contact with the cliff, with a large bang. <laughs> Looks like you couldn't cut it after all, Sonny. If you're this easy to toy with, don't ever think you'll have a chance to take me in for questioning or whatever it is that you are here for. I suggest you scram while I still allow a little mercy for you. That is, if you're still alive. In typical Ryuga fashion, we can see him gloating over his recent attack to Vegeta. You wanna know something? I wasn't this strong before, but when I came into this strange world, I knew something within me changed. Even though I don't have El Drago with me physically, I can feel his spirit lingering inside me. Now, it feels like no one can touch me. All of a sudden, underneath Ryuga's feet, a slight tremor can be felt by him. Slowly but surely, the ground beneath him starts to shake aggressively. Huh? Surprising to Ryuga, but unsurprising to us, we see an explosion of aura coming from the direction where Vegeta had just landed. The intensity of this sudden explosion being so high that the entire mountain itself has to be reduced to rubble. But what? What is happening to Vegeta exactly? Okay, that's it. I think I've underestimated you, puny child. But don't think for even a second that you've even come close to defeating me, the Prince of All Saiyans, Vegeta! Oh, uh, what? Ryuga, taken aback at what he just saw, is just perplexed, his mind unable to comprehend what just happened. What? What in Hades just happened? Who? What is he? Prince of All Saiyans? Vegeta, on the other hand, won't give Ryuga even the slightest time to react, as he rushes forward with such speed and vigour in his Super Saiyan 2 form that you'd think he was carrying out a mission to execute someone, and he's closing in on his target. What? Then, Vegeta weirdly stops just in front of Ryuga, only mere inches away from him. So fast, but how? Enough talk, now it's my turn. Vegeta, without hesitation, takes his hand and swiftly presses it onto Ryuga, in the same way he did with Pui Pui during the Buu Saga, in the final moments before his death. Ah! Instead of blasting him to smithereens, Vegeta merely uses a small fraction of its power to simply push Ryuga to one of the surrounding cliffs. However, that small fraction of power is enough to send Ryuga flying through multiple cliffs, careening across their land without any indication of stopping. Until he finally does, crashing onto yet another cliff with such force that you'd think a meteor crashed into Earth. And as we go back to Vegeta, he stands perched up on a mountain, observing Ryuga for any signs of a counter-attack. That'll teach that idiot not to mess with me. I'm so glad Kakarot wasn't here to witness any of this. Huh? What the hell? Just as Vegeta mentioned Goku's name, as if magic, Goku appears like a genie, and it's quite obvious that he didn't arrive by flying. So, this is called instant transmission. It's the only way to travel to the other side of the world in a jiffy. 
What? So you're telling me we just teleported to the other side of the world? It looks like we're in a different area, so you must be telling the truth. Speak of the devil. Hey clown, who is this rugrat you brought along? Don't tell me he was the other being with the energy source. He looks even weaker than the other guy I just fought. Yep, it's him. To be honest, I didn't believe it at first, but he's a lot stronger than he looks. So what's going on here? You're in Super Saiyan 2? Jenga, just staring at the shorter, blonde-haired Saiyan, not forgetting what he said about him, just responds, Hold on, this is your friend? But, but, did he just call me a rugrat? Listen pal, you may be stronger than me, but at least I'm taller than you, short pants. Upon hearing this insult from a person he barely even met, Vegeta, in shock, just chooses to remain calm, thinking to himself, This impudent fool. Well, at least they didn't see me fighting that hothead earlier. That would have been more of an embarrassment. Wait, what's that? No, no way. Huh? Why do I feel the ground shaking so hard? Is there an earthquake? Suddenly, all three individuals sense that something is wrong. A disturbance in the air and in the ground. When suddenly, a huge red explosion, almost as if a super volcano had just erupted with rage, can be seen from the distance unyielding in its fury, with red bursts of lava and huge chunks of rock being seen flying with no control. And just as abruptly, as though a monster came out of Pandora's box, an enraged red dragon can be seen erupting from the mountain, with such ferocity, its face intending to destroy and lay waste to anything it sees. Uh, uh, wait! What? What is this? A dragon? We're supposed to be teleported to the place where someone from home is supposed to be. But I don't see anyone. Unless... Unless... No. Jinga, now shocked at what he just saw, has so many questions in his mind. His brain going a million miles an hour, trying to figure out what just happened. <laughs> When we attempt to confirm our suspicions regarding who this is, Ryuga, revealing himself like a god, finally shows his face, but there's something about him that looks different, more sinister. Oh. Ryuga? It... it can't be! Jinga, almost in full-blown panic attack mode, can't help but stare in horror upon the being on top of the mountain, who we all know is Ryuga. Even though his last memory of Ryuga is a positive one, consisting of him saving the world from Nemesis by sacrificing his life, Jinka just can't bring himself to be happy at his appearance. He just can't associate the selfless Ryuga he last remembered to this being. Ryuga, even from that far away, somehow notices the scarf wearing blader. It comes as a surprise to him that he's not the only one who came to this strange world. Huh? Jenga? Yes. Yes. Perfect. You have all proven yourselves worthy to be in my presence. Prince of all Saiyans and Jenga Hagani. Now, why don't you both give me your energy, so that I can feast on it, and become the strongest being on this planet? What's going to happen now that all the players, Goku, Jinga, Vegeta, and Ryuga, are in the same place? Find out in the next episode of Dragon Ball X Beyblade. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like and subscribe for more Dragon Ball related videos.